why am I popping all these balloons? Well, I'm making impulse responses. And today I'm talking about room or reverb IRs. And I'll have a second video talking about how to make and record guitar cab or speaker impulse responses. What are impulse responses, or IRs for short? An IR captures the tone and the time, the length, of a space or the response of a speaker. Every room has a different sound, from the size and the shape of it to the materials it's built out of, to things like acoustic treatment or even furniture, carpets, curtains. Everything affects the sound and the reverb length of a room. You can imagine something like a concrete stairwell, where there's a ton of echo because all the surfaces are reflective. They also tend to be small squares, which will increase reflections. If it's a very tall stairwell, it might have a long echo time or reverb tail. If it's a short stairwell, it will be smaller. Something like a big stone cathedral, of course, will also be very reflective and very large with a long reverb time. On the other hand, something like a recording studio, which is designed to control the sound, has angled walls everywhere to break up standing waves, as well as acoustic treatment to properly dampen the space, will have a much smaller and more controlled sound. Now, a large live room for drum recording will have a more lively and reverberant sound, but something like a control room will usually be very dampened and tightly controlled. A properly designed and treated room will also have a more balanced sound from the bass to the treble, whereas something that's not really designed for sound at all, a natural space or an industrial space, may have a lot of low frequencies, may have a lot of high frequency buildup, will get a very different character from these different kinds of places. Every room in your house or outside will have a different sound. Now, for music production and sound design, it's not necessarily about capturing the best or the most controlled space, but something that's going to be interesting and flavorful that's going to aid in our production. So some room that may not sound great or an industrial space like a stairwell may not really work well for recording in the real world, but it may be useful as an impulse response in post-production. So how do we go about capturing impulse responses? Of course, there's a variety of ways and budgets available for doing that from the very cheap to the very expensive. For this project, I'm using this old Zoom stereo handheld recorder and some balloons. It's about as cheap as it gets. You could even do it with the microphone on your cell phone if you want to. I picked a room in my house that happens to be very open and reflective right now. There's not a lot of furniture in there, and it's got a nice tall angled ceiling, so I thought it would be an interesting space to capture. I set up my recorder on a tripod in a few different positions and popped balloons to generate the impulse. Popping a balloon works well because it covers most of the frequency range and is a loud, short sound. Professional setups usually involve large, flat frequency response monitor speakers to generate a sine wave, and that tone will go from the very lowest frequencies up to the highest. It will be recorded by whatever mics they have and then deconvolved into an impulse response. Obviously, that's a very high budget option and would record a more accurate and true to life impulse response. However, for music production and sound design, having a huge budget and a team to do all that isn't necessarily that important. What we want are tools that are going to be useful in our projects, and it doesn't really matter whether you do that on a low budget or a high budget. Even a small handheld recorder like I have will be high fidelity enough to capture a quality impulse response. It simply may not be as scientifically accurate as other methods. Besides the room, the type of microphone you use and the position of it are going to have a big impact on the sound of the IR. For a more true-to-life accurate sound, you'd want a relatively flat, neutral microphone, not something that has a lot of coloration. The position of the microphone depends entirely on the goal of the project. For a nice natural room sound, you might want to pick somewhere more central in the room where the room sounds best. For sound design, the sky's the limit. You could put the microphone in a spot that has a lot of bass buildup in the room or a particularly reverberant spot or a very dry and dead spot. It all depends on what you're trying to get out of this. And if you create your own IRs, you have control over that. A lot of it comes down to experimentation and I would recommend that you simply try different things and see what happens. For this project, I picked four different spots around the room just to see how different areas sounded because it's hard to know in the room what you're going to be capturing with the microphone. I found a central spot high up near the ceiling tended to be my favorite when I got into using it in post-production. I also did an IR of a tiled shower. 
which didn't end up being as reverberant and interesting as I expected. I thought it would be a lot more echoey, but it ended up being uh, relatively dry because it's a small bathroom and there's, I suppose, enough non-tiled surfaces. I also did an impulse response of this room just to see how it sounded, and compared to the other rooms, it is quite a bit more dry, even though I don't have any professional acoustic treatment. I have a carpeted floor, and I have enough furniture in the room that breaks up the sound. It's not professionally treated, and it's not completely dry by any means, but compared to an actually fairly empty room with hardwood floors, it is quite noticeably drier and has much shorter reverb tail. I'm going to be releasing these Reverb IRs as well as my Speaker Cab IRs for free over at my new Discord server, so you can find the link for that in the description. We're going to be discussing music production, tips, tricks, critiques, plugins, amps, gear, hardware, whatever. Um, I'm hoping we can start a fun little community of like-minded people to discuss these things and share our work. Here's a little demo track using my own IR reverb. I'm routing everything into this IR and I can control the mix of each instrument within that. I'm using the stock reverb plugin, which allows you to load up an impulse response. As you can see here, I've got just the wet signal. I'm using this bedroom high ceiling four, which I liked the best. Here I have some pretty uninteresting clean guitars with very little effects on them. I have uh, the Audiority L12X, which is a free amp, um, just to show that there's nothing fancy going on in the guitars. And here they are without the reverb. So this is just the reverb send of the guitars. So this is 100% wet. And I'm just going to cycle through the different IRs here so you can get a sense for what each of them sounds like and how it impacts the character here. That last one is the studio I'm sitting in here, and uh, it's not the most acoustically treated. There's a fair bit of stuff to diffuse the space, I guess, and the carpeted floor helps absorb things, and it's not a huge room. Nonetheless, you can hear how much drier, and you can see it, compared to this very untreated and very bare room with a big ceiling. The reverb tail on that is just visually quite a lot longer. You can also see going through these different ones from the same room, that they all look fairly different. Uh, despite being the same room and the same mic, uh, just different positions creates fairly different results and uh, definitely a different flavor. I think the last one I got, number four here, it's just got the most clear and open tone, and to my ears, I like that the best. So that's the one I ended up using for this little demo mix. So now I'm just going to go through the other elements of the mix, isolated, without reverb, and then with the reverb mixed in, and then uh, we'll work up to the full mix here. Here is an electric piano part. I think it's particularly cool how it sounds on drums, even electronic drums like that. It's got a cool vibe. It's like having a drum machine amplified in a real room. Uh, so it's a cool effect. It doesn't sound like a digital reverb. We've already heard the left and right guitars. I also have a lead guitar part here. And this is again the same amp as the others, so no real effects on the lead guitar.
I like that uh, shorter reverb on a lead guitar like that. I think it sounds pretty cool. All of it sounds, well, it sounds like a room. It sounds like a small room. And I don't usually use small room reverbs in any of my mixes. Um, but since I made these myself, I did. And I actually really like the results and might uh, do some similar stuff and maybe use these for some other mixes. Um, I think it ends up being a cool effect and it's, it's something unique and uh, it's my own reverb. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I definitely like reverb and uh, experiment a lot with trying to find the right reverb. Something like this forces you a little bit more to maybe use something different than you would normally jump to uh, with your favorite reverb plugin. Here is the full mix of everything and I will start with the reverb off. <laughs> So here's a quick demonstration of how to make an IR from scratch. This one is just one I did, a super rough one uh, in a recording studio on my cell phone. And I just used a hand clap in the room to get a little impulse. I have no idea if this will sound good or not, but here we go. I figured it was worth a shot. I just recorded a video on my phone uh, and here is the audio file. So what I'm gonna do is just scroll in. Uh, I have several um, impulses here that I did, several claps. We can bounce them all and see what sounds good. So the first thing I'm gonna do in Reaper is just uh, shorten the file, and then I'm gonna zoom way in and see where exactly the audio starts and line that up. Um, I can also make the peaks bigger all right, there's gonna be a little background noise, but I just wanna get from the start. And normally I, I would think cell phones are a mono microphone, but it seems to be in stereo. This is a S10E. Um, so I have this essentially at the start of the waveform, and I can even put a tiny little fade just to make sure there's no pop there. And we're gonna to go to the end of the impulse now, again, there's some background noise in this case, so we're just gonna have to sort of estimate. That looks like it's cutting off just a little bit of the tail. So I'm just gonna do this by hand here. We're gonna go to the edge here, I'll put a little fade out on it. And um, that seems to be where the tail fades out. So that's really all you have to do is just go into the start and um, line up the impulse. Now, it may be better in some cases to, in fact, I think I will actually just shift this over a little bit more to where the actual impulse starts. So I'm going to do that and repeat that for all these here. So the next thing I'm going to do is just create regions here, and I'm going to render these. Um, I'll title these uh, Studio 1. Two and um, and bounce these out. Set this to project regions. This should give me the two. Now we can test it right right here in the same project. I've got just a little drum loop here. Uh, just a quick thing on some electronic drums. So we get something. I think this is a good way to kind of test the sound of the IR itself. So that's with no reverb at all. And in Reaper, we have the stock reverb plugin. There's others. Um, some DAWs may come with a convolution reverb built in. Uh, you can certainly buy them like Altiverb or uh, Waves has one. You can also uh, use Convology, which is a free uh, impulse response or convolution reverb. Um, but I, I like to just use the stock Reaper one for these. And I'm going to pull up the first um, WAV file. I'm going to apply minus 18 gain. And uh, we'll see how that works. It looks a little hot. 
from this graphic, but let's just see what it sounds like. All right, so that's a, just a quick one. We can, um, well, let's try the other one we made first and then uh, I can do a different one and see if I like that better. I am noticing it's a little louder on one side than the other. I'm not sure if one of the mics is louder or if that's sort of where I was pretty far away from the mic from my phone in the room. So there shouldn't be a huge difference in the stereo field, but I can definitely tell the left channel is a little louder here. Now, what you can hear, there's a pretty big difference. This is me standing in the same place in the room. The mic hasn't moved. It's just on a table. And uh, the only difference is how loud my clap was and the exact frequency of my clap. So this does show sort of the importance for repeatability of using something like a balloon uh, that you can have something a little more repeatable than a clap. Um, now, which one sounds better? That's entirely up to you. I think the louder one, the, the second impulse I have, which was from a louder clap, sounds better to me. Um, but again, you can just uh, test this out and, and see what you like. Since we're not going for, you know, capturing the room in its most accurate state here, we can just do whatever sounds good to us and use whatever. You could try different methods of capturing an impulse. I've seen people snap a leather belt. Um, you know, there's balloons, claps. You get one of those like director clapboards, slap a few pieces of wood together. Uh, you could use a gunshot, <laughs> a blank. <laughs> Hopefully don't shoot your house. Um, but anything like that will work. Um, we can try one more here and just see um, what this is like. And, um, you know, that's all that's all it takes. Render that out. And now this should be right here in the same folder. We can see what that sounds like. I still think I like that second one the best, but you know, it's all kind of luck of the draw with that. And I could process the rest of these. Now, is this a great reverb for anything? Not necessarily. Um, this is a studio that's very dry and it's, um, you know, it's super controlled. It's a great, very high end studio with, um, it's a big room with superb control, but is it the most interesting? Um, no. Not not for using it as an IR. I just kind of thought it'd be fun to kind of measure the room a bit and see see what it sounds like. For the huge size of the room, it's incredibly dry and controlled. So uh, what little reverb you're getting is kind of like there's a little bit of a live floor area where there's some wood and um, there's some diffusion around the room, but a lot of it's absorption. And a lot of the um, walls are angled. There's acoustic ceiling tiles half the room's carpeted so um it is definitely a very dry room but anyways that's just a quick uh tutorial on how to make these and use them in reaper you can use other plugins but all you have to do on the editing side is just um, snap it out to the you know the edge of the waveform um, bounce that as a stereo wave file and you're good to go. I hope you've learned something. And if you head on over to my Discord, you can grab my IRs for free and play with them yourself. And I hope some of you decide to go out and make your own and share them with me. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what you come up with 
and it's a fun way to get out and do some recording in the wild, as it were, or just around your house. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.